Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, we are back with Sir Ginger, deck number 960. Uh, Sir Ginger the Meal Ender is uh, my personal favorite card out of Wilds of Eldraine. So, Sir Ginger has Trample, Hexproof, and Haste as long as an opponent controls a Planeswalker. She's still mad about Garrick eating her hubby. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, the uh, several years ago, the original trailer for Throne of Eldraine. Go watch it. It's amazing. But she's a 3-1. Whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, she gets a counter and you get to scry one. Of course, she's food, so you can sack it to gain life equal to her power. So, that being said, there is a whole host of cards that I have in here that just put themselves into the graveyard, you know, uh, Termoid's Crypt, and even some things that have uh, other functions, you know, Mistress Bauble, Wayfarer's Bauble, Mind Stone, Hedron Archive, Lotus Petal. Uh, we're going to stop on Lotus Petal for a second. There is a... There are three ways in the deck that I can actually get Ginger out on turn one. Lotus Petal plus any land is one of those ways. Of course, the Commander Sphere, Burnished Heart, and the Dreamstone Hedron. All of these are good. Uh, like the Hedron, if you don't, you know, uh, if you're done with it, you can sack it, put that counter on. Now, there is, because of that, there is a lot of, obviously, we are going with Make Ginger Big Swing. It's kind of a Voltron commander. And because of that, we have Throne of Geth to proliferate. Not only do we get to proliferate, but Throne of Geth is perfect here because you can sacrifice the artifact that will trigger Ginger, and then you get to proliferate. It's beautiful. Uh, Karn's Bastion proliferates. Contagion Class woo, proliferates. Yes, Contagion Engine would be better, but, you know, using what I got. Uh, Ashnod's Altar. Now, I'll admit Ashnod's Altar probably should be... Uh, uh, oh, help me out. What's the name of that artifact? Uh, Crackling Ironworks. Thank you. I heard you through the, through the magical powers of the internet. Of course, our the closest thing we have to card draw, besides those artifacts that sack, you know, are, is the Mystic Forge. This is amazing. Uh, I have effectively drawn several cards from this. Uh, love it, love it. But let's go through our mana ramp, shall we? Now, you heard me say I built this with the cards I have. I truly mean that. <laughs> but uh, she has a little bit... Because she's, you know... My favorite one from the set, she has a little more of a budget than most decks do. Uh, we have Soul Ring, Grim Monolith, Thran Dynamo. I love the Liquid Metal Torque. Love that. Uh, Thought Vessel, you never know when you're going to need it. Pristine Talisman, Felwar Stone, Gilded Lotus. Basalt Monolith. Bonder's Ornament can be card draw. It, I mean, it really can. Um, and, and then, of course, our good old-fashioned doubling cube there. Now, uh, before we get into the rest of it, let's get our... These are cool artifacts that I've played because it's an artifact deck, right? I mean, we have the Unwinding Clock, which is an amazing card. But it's really, really good with Magistrate Scepter. Especially since Magistrate Scepter uses a charge counter. And that can be proliferated as well. And then the Unwinding Clock. You get, to, you see where we're going here. It's not infinite, but it's a lot more turns than you should have. <laughs> um, Forsaken Monument's a great card. Uh, it's just a shame I can't copy it with my... Uh, Sculpting Steel, because, you know, it is legendary. Not that I didn't think about it. Uh, Immortal Sun. 
because Immortal Sun is a flavor win there because she does not like Planeswalkers as a whole. So this is, I mean, yes, you get to draw an additional card. Uh, your spells are one cheap, one colorless cheaper. I'm sorry, one generic cheaper. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Staff of Domination, an amazing card, especially with, you know, all the other stuff in the deck, the mana ramp. And, of course, our good old Dark Steel Forge to protect her from any of those board wipes. Speaking of board wipes, we have our own in All is Dust. That's kind of one of those things that needed to happen. Um, now, we got to win. I mean, it's just, uh, so we're going to pump her up. And, you know, the counters and whatnot, that stuff works. But it may be a little slow. So we're going to give her some weapons to fight with, you know. Black Blade Reforged. Loxodon Warhammer. Swiftfoot Boots to, you know, protect her. Come here! Grappling Hook. It's a wonderful, wonderful card. And as they are stacking up my camera, I'm still getting used to my new setup here. Uh, this is the first deck video I have shot in the studio, so this is kind of a trial run. We're going to see how it works. Y'all let me know what you think about audio quality, video quality, whatnot. I'm not done in here, uh, but I am far enough along where I can make a video because it's been too long, and, you know, I got that itch. Anyway, Commander's Plate, amazing equipment for a colorless commander. If you are running a colorless deck, don't care what it is, you need to run Commander's Plate because equip creature gains protection from each color that it's not. Not, yeah, well, in your commander's color identity, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, protection from all five colors, pretty sweet. Uh, Explorer Scope. Yeah, I know it's kind of weak, but it does kind of help in the early game, you know, to, to ramp your mana up. Uh, Mithril Coat. Sword of Vengeance, that's right. Ginger's got a Chroma Sword. Uh, she also visited Galadriel and got that Lorian Brooch, you know, non-basic land walk. Because we do want to swing with her. She's not always going to be indestructible, but we do want to keep swinging with her, and, and you know, because that's our win, right? It, it's it's a Voltron Commander deck. Um, Grafted Exoskeleton does a real good job of that, because getting her to 10 is not hard at all. And Grafted Exoskeleton, you just, I mean, with Poison, you just slow down and count to 10, right? Um, do have Dark Steel Plate. Argentium Armor. The Basilisk Collar is, you know, uh, people think twice about that Death Touch. They really do. Uh, Resurrection Orb. I kind of like this one, you know. Uh, of course, the good old-fashioned Colossus Hammer. I have yet to be lucky enough to get the hammer and the exoskeleton together. That would be silly, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. And then, of course, our Sword of War and Peace. Um, yeah, there were several swords I could have chose from, but I like uh, the red and white one uh, because white is the most played removal, swords, path, what have you. Um, and, and there again, I had it. Good old-fashioned Acroma's Memorial because we do have other creatures. Now, those other creatures serve a purpose, most of them, to Ginger, because, you know, she is the queen bee in this deck. But there are some others, like Junk Diver. The theme just fits the deck, uh, and you can get back other things, and it triggers uh, your commander, making her bigger. Joris Familiar, of course, making everything cheaper. Same as the Foundry Inspector. The Sad Robot. Uh, is a creature, but it does put itself into the graveyard, so that helps. I mean, it helps your uh, pump your commander and pump your. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Super excited. The card draw. The, yeah, all the things. All the things with Sad Robot. Uh, Scrap Trawler. Just like the bird, it is a great card. Uh, I mean, and it fits the theme and because you, your artifacts are going to. Can loop a little bit that way. 
uh, Walking Atlas. Now, I know this is kind of weak, uh, what you're thinking, but, I mean, turn one soul rings happen, and if you get the Walking Atlas, that's an amazing thing, right? So, and even not, there's going to come a time where you're tired of it, you can sack it to the old whatever, and, you know, but I, I do still like it. It's slow ramp, but, you know, hey, it might be a little bit of ramp. Steel Overseer going to pump the team. Now, if you are lucky enough to get this with the clock, uh, expect one of them to get destroyed. Well, I say one of them. I kind of always expect the clock to get destroyed. If the clock makes it around the table once, that has to be good enough for me. I won't play it unless I can get value out of one table revolution. Because, let's face it, we can't really hope for any more than that. Lodestone Golem. Kind of a dirty move. You know, non-artifact spells cost one more to cast. Now, that does uh, involve our all is dust, but that's about it. And But let's face it, it'll, it'll slow down a little bit of decks, just a little bit. I like Metal Work Colossus. Uh, Metal Work Colossus is, you know, free most of the time. Steel Hellkite. Uh... Repeatable removal, that seems nice. Traxos is just a big old beater. I mean, it really is, as is the Dark Steel Juggernaut in this particular deck. So, why not have them, right? <clears throat> and of course, our, our good friend in the sky, the Miss Platinum Angel. So, now we're going to go to non basic lands. Uh, because we only have four basic lands. That's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of non-basics here. Uh, we're going to roll through these. I'll comment on them uh, as necessary. Uh, terrain Generator. Wasteland. Deserted Temple. I like this because it untaps another land. Urza Saga. Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin does wonderful things. Uh, you destroy target non-basic land. Uh, Voltron decks can be just completely hamstrung by Maze of Ith or Maze of Ith type lands. So that's why Field of Ruin is in here. Forge of Heroes. Power Depot. Temple of the False God. Buried Ruin. There's our own Maze of Ith. Scorched Ruin, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, Throne of the High City, Darksteel Citadel, Bonder's Enclave, Ash Baron, Drownyard Temple, Labyrinth of S-Word, Tyrite Sanctum, there again, pumping our commander, Ancient Tomb, another one of the ways that you can get her out on turn one. For, uh, uh, oh yeah, obviously the soul ring is the third way. The command beacon, Mishra's factory, Drangeth ruins, non-human creature. Hey, that'll work. Access tunnel. Now I realize access tunnel is, doesn't really fall in line with our, you know, pump up the commander, but I mean, you gotta have colorless land anyway, right? It comes into play on tap, so why not? Reliquary Tower. Homeward Path. Here again, I, I think Homeward Path is an undervalued card uh, because theft exists out there and people are loving both Italis right now. So, Homeward Path, if you can, if you got room for it, every deck wants it. Witch's Clinic. You know I'm having a Rogue's Passage, you know. A Voltron deck. Ruins of Orin Reef. Mystifying Maze. Mouth of Ronan. Now, I'll admit, yes, you've seen everything that I, I've seen. There's only one land left, and it ain't nothing spectacular. Mouth of Ronan does not need to be in here. Uh, I had it because, well, I only had four waste to my name, so. Uh, once I get another waste, this will pop out because I have no snow covered in here. It is just a colorless land. That's it. 
<laughs> and lastly, the Shire Terrace. Well, that is it for her. Uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Yeah, I even cut out a little thing for the back of her to... Uh, I'll have to shuffle this up for the next time I play, that's for certain. But that is Sir Ginger. As I said, she was one of my favorites from Eldraine. And that is what we've got for today. I appreciate y'all very much for your patience. And we're back, baby. But right now, it is time to shuffle and cut.